In this video, we're walking through hypovolemia and hypervolemia and some critical thinking points that you need to know about them for nursing school. It is not enough to just memorize what hypovolemia is and what hypervolemia is in nursing, but you actually have to apply that information and critically think about it. So that is what we're going to walk through in this video. And of course, I have a free cheat sheet for you to help you learn how to study and critically think better in nursing school. So be sure to stay until the end of the video and I will let you know where you can get that. Now hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Let's dive in. Now, before we get into the juicy critical thinking part, we first need to understand what hypovolemia and hypervolemia actually are. Hypovolemia happens when there is not enough circulating blood volume in the body. Now, there's a decrease in blood volume that usually keeps the body perfused with nutrients and oxygen-rich blood. So keep this definition of hypovolemia in mind as we move on to that critical thinking part in a minute. But first, let's look at what hypervolemia means as well. Now, hypervolemia happens when there's too much fluid circulating in the body and the body cannot compensate for it. So in contrast with hypovolemia, which is too little blood volume, hypervolemia is when there is too much blood volume in the body and it's overloading the organs. So this could also be called fluid overload. So again, keep this definition of hypervolemia in mind so we can critically think about it in a minute. So there are three things that we're going to critically think about with both of these. What can cause them, what signs and symptoms that you'll want to look for, and the nursing assessments that you'll need to do, and what nursing interventions can we do to help fix it. Actually, I think that's four things. We're gonna go over four things. So let's dive into hypovolemia first. Now remember the definition of hypovolemia, it's a lack of blood volume. Now there's less circulating blood through the body to help keep the organs perfused. So now that you understand what hypovolemia is, let's critically think through what could cause it. So what can cause a low fluid volume? Now I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Now, what'd you come up with? What can decrease circulating blood volume? Now, I bet you thought of things like vomiting, diarrhea, severe dehydration, trauma with a large amount of blood loss, burns, and medications that could cause a fluid shift, things like diuretics, and you would be right with all of those, my friend. Now, all of those things can lead to hypovolemia. Now, you see how this works. Once you know what hypovolemia and hypervolemia are, you will be able to critically think about them and think through the other aspects of it. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms and the nursing assessment for hypovolemia. Now if there's less circulating blood volume, what do you think that you might see on the nursing assessment? Now some mild symptoms that you might notice in your assessment would be dry mucous membranes, so you want to assess that, excessive thirst because of that decrease in water in the body, postural hypotension and a thready pulse due to the lack of circulation blood volume. So be sure to check their blood pressure and their pulse and then dark urine because there's less water to dilute the urine. Now more severe hypovolemia will cause the body to try to compensate and the blood vessels to vasoconstrict to try to create more pressure to circulate the blood to more areas of the body and hope that it can oxygenate those organs more effectively and efficiently. So that heart rate will try to increase to hopefully increase the cardiac output and therefore increase circulating blood because if there's less blood volume to circulate, the heart will try to pump faster to compensate and get what little blood volume there is to those organs. So let's also quickly talk about hematocrit levels with hypovolemia. You may find an elevated hematocrit because the blood is more concentrated because there is less excess fluid. Now the hematocrit measures the percentage of red blood cells in relation to the rest of the blood. So if there's less blood volume and fluid, that would increase the percentage of red blood cells, not because there's more red blood cells, but because of the amount of fluid fluid has decreased. 
So with hypovolemia, we know that there is not enough blood volume circulating in the vascular space. So our interventions now are going to be based around getting more volume in that vascular space. Now this can be done in a few different ways depending on the situation and severity of it. Now if hypovolemia is not too severe, then oral rehydration or increasing fluid intake can be done. Now this would help increase that overall volume of circulating blood. For more severe Severe cases, IV hydration with an isotonic solution would be our goal. Now, remember, our goal here is to increase the circulating blood volume so that more blood can get to those organs to oxygenate them and get them nutrients. So once you know, like we said, that pathophysiology of hypovolemia and what's going on with it, you're more able to critically think through the other details, like the causes, the signs and symptoms, the nursing assessment, and the nursing interventions for those things. See? Four, not three. Four things. <laughs> so now that you've gotten practice with that for hypovolemia, now let's go on to hypervolemia and talk about that one. Now we know that hypervolemia means that there's too much blood volume. There's too much fluid in the body. Now this could also be called fluid overload. Now hypervolemia is mostly caused by organ issues like the kidneys, heart, the liver, when they aren't able, they're, they're not functioning to eliminate, balance, and circulate fluid in the body like they normally should be. Now it can also be caused by too much or too fast of IV fluids. Now this makes sense because if the organs aren't doing this job to eliminate, to balance, to circulate fluid in the body, it would build up and keep increasing leading to hypervolemia. Now the same thing goes with IV fluids. If there's too much fluid going into the body, it can lead to fluid overload. Now, what signs and symptoms would you expect to see in a patient with hypervolemia? Now let's do the same thing. Let's take a minute to think about it and then we will go over it. So what'd you come up with? Now some mild symptoms that you might notice during your assessment would be edema of the ankles or hands, weight gain, since there's more fluid staying in the body, veins that look full or feel full when you palpate them, and then with more advanced hypervolemia, you might hear crackles in the lungs or they might have pulmonary edema from that fluid not having anywhere else to go, so it leaks into the lungs. So be sure to assess their lungs. Now lab values would show a decreased hematocrit level because the blood is more dilute. Now remember that hematocrit measures the percentage of red blood cells in relation to the rest of the blood. So if there's now more blood volume and fluid, then that would decrease the percentage of red blood cells, not because there's less red blood cells, but because the amount of fluid has increased in relation to the rest of the blood. Now with hypervolemia, we know that there is too much fluid circulating in the body. The body is overloaded and it doesn't know what to do with all of that extra fluid. So we need to get rid of that extra fluid to get the body back in balance. Now in order to do this, we would need to give a medication that helps to hint, hint, diuresis the body. Now diuretics, yes, we would give diuretics to help pull that extra fluid out of the intracellular space to be removed from the body. Now, when you're studying other topics in nursing school, make sure that you think of it like this. Learn the pathophysiology of what is happening first and then apply it and critically think through the other aspects of it, like the signs and symptoms, the nursing assessment and the nursing interventions. So this is exactly why we do it this way. We do not want you to memorize a list of things because that is not gonna help you in nursing school. We help you critically think through it. Now, this is so important, friend. I am telling you, it is way easier to learn nursing this way and way better for you for your exam, to be quite honest. You are not going to be tested on how well you memorize things in nursing school. When you work with real life patients and when you take your nursing school exam, you have to be able to critically think and apply what you are learning. Now make sure to download the free nursing school study checklist that we have for you that walks you through this study process step by step. It's also filled with other fantastic nursing school study tips to help you pass. Now that link is down below in the description for you to get that. And if you're struggling with nursing fundamentals in nursing school, be sure sure to check out the step-by-step -step videos that we have for you inside the Nursing SOS membership community. 
My friend, you are not alone in, anymore in nursing school. I am here to hold your hand every step of the way. No more confusion, no overwhelm, no stress. I'm here for you. So you can check the link down below for all of the details. And if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below and let me know that you loved it. Share it with your friends. And of course, click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. And click on one of these videos right over here so you can keep rocking nursing school school. And as always, friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.